Hello and welcome to this training video on scope one, which is part of our series on the Corporate Net Zero Standard version two public consultation. My name is Owen White and I'm a research lead at the SPTI. In this video, I'll be walking you through the key updates in our approach to scope one. Uh, please note that this overview isn't exhaustive and many of the details will be explored further during the public consultation. If you have any feedback, please use the consultation channels available on our website. On the topic of scope on emissions, there are three key updates being introduced in the new corporate net zero standard. The first update relates to a revised absolute contraction target setting method to account for cumulative emissions over multiple target cycles. The second update is on the separation of scope one and scope two targets, meaning that companies will no longer be able to set combined scope one and two targets. The third update is on the expanded boundary, which now covers 100% of scope one emissions instead of the previous 95%. Each of the key updates is designed to address some key challenges surfaced through research conducted at the SPTI and analysis produced by the academic community and broader stakeholder feedback. The first of these challenges is that the current absolute contraction approach doesn't account well for emissions overshoot across the target period. The updated absolute contraction approach being proposed here focuses on the conservation of the underlying carbon budget. The second challenge centers on ensuring that scope one targets are met with scope one uh, mitigation, which is often not the case when companies establish combined scope one and two targets. The standard now requires separate scope one and two targets, meaning that potentially easier scope two mitigations cannot be used to claim scope one target achievement. The third challenge is on providing greater clarity around how performance against previous target impacts future target setting. The updated method proposals provide a way to account for previous performance during the target renewal process. The corporate net zero standard version two methods only apply to scope one emission sources that do not fall under one of our emissions intensive activities, which have their own specific sectoral guidance. If a company has a mixture of sector relevant and non-sector relevant activities within their operations, they will have to split their target setting between the methods provided in our sector uh, specific guidance and our cross-sector guidance established in the corporate net zero standard. Sectoral guidance will be updated to ensure full compatibility with the updated uh, cross-sector standard. This means that all scope one emission sources without specific sectoral guidance will need to be set targets using the updated absolute contraction approach, which is discussed in the following uh, slides. Before diving into the updated absolute contraction approach, it's firstly important to explain some of the key terminology relevant to scope one target setting. The absolute contraction approach involves four key elements. The first being the reference year, which is the year used when calculating the company's carbon budget. And a company's carbon budget represents how many tons of carbon dioxide equivalent the company can admit over a number of years to be considered 1.5 degree aligned. The reference year is related to the start year of the underlying SPGI pathways and is currently set at 2020 for all new targets. The second element then is our base year, uh, and the base year is the starting year for the target chosen by the company, and it must be within three years of initial validation and must reflect typical operations of the company. It represents the starting point for the company emission reduction pathway. The third element then is our cross-sector pathway, which is the reference scope one emissions reduction pathway and is derived from a global 1.5 degree scenarios. It is set between the reference year emissions value and the allocated residual emissions at the net zero year. The final element then is our company pathway, which is a company specific scope one emission reduction pathway, which may be different for cross sector pathways and the company chosen base year may be different from the 2020 reference year. A challenge with the current absolute contraction approach is that it is primarily based on a linear reduction rate uh, based on 2020 levels, and that companies could keep 1.5 degree aligned claims while potentially overshooting their emissions 
within their interim targets as progress between the base year and the target year was not tracked in cumulative terms. Another key challenge was that there was also not a clear mechanism to correct for overconsumption of the carbon budget in subsequent targets. Uh, this issue has been also been pointed out as one of the key challenges uh, noted in academic literature on corporate target setting. The revised method introduced here aims to address this uh, specifically. There are two variations of a revised absolute contraction method being proposed in the standard. The aim being to test which is most applicable and implementable uh, via the consultation. The first option ensures that regardless of historical emissions, a linear scope one emission reduction pathway is drawn from the base year to the net zero year. This proposal represents only a slight revision to the existing version of the absolute contraction approach and it ensures that companies always have a target setting path to net zero by 2050. Future ambition rates are determined by the level of performance in the previous target cycles. This variation, however, does not directly correct for potential carbon budget overconsumption caused by having a later base year than the scenario reference year or correct for underperformance in the previous target cycle. But for the second option, our budget conserving contraction approach, the net zero year is shifted forward, potentially earlier than 2050, and a straight line emissions reduction pathway is drawn from the base year to the net zero year. Crucially, this variation does correct for carbon budget overconsumption caused by having a later base year than a reference year or caused by underperformance in the previous target cycle. This may result in uh, significantly more challenging pathways for companies with significant historical budget overconsumption. However, it's also the case that if companies perform well in previous target cycle, it could also result in a more gradual emission reduction pathway and reward uh, earlier action. The feasibility of both of these approaches for different company types will be further tested uh, as part of our consultation process. These updated scope one target setting approaches also interact with the updated target renewal process and proposed approaches to carbon removals, which will be both explained in other videos. At the end of the initial target setting period, company scope one emissions performance will be evaluated and further options will be provided to address any underperformance against their initial company pathway. Based on a company's sector, net zero residual scope one emissions may be allocated. And based on this allocation, companies may need to also address these projected uh, residual emissions. Both the scope one renewal and removals are discussed in their own dedicated videos. So we would encourage those interested to visit uh, those videos uh, to learn a little bit more about those topics. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, please refer to the draft standard and our website for more information on our scope one revisions. I'd encourage you to fill out our video feedback form to help shape future communications about the corporate net zero standard revision. Please also fill out our public consultation survey to provide your feedback directly on the draft standard. Both links can be found on our website and in this video's YouTube description.